Welcome to The Jump. I'm Rachel Nichols, joined by a couple of NBA champs who do know apparently how to find a seat. Matt Barnes sitting next to me. That seat looks lovely yes, on you, Matt. Fall. And the <laughs> fabulous Kendrick Perkins joining us from afar, but not for long. Kendrick's going to be back in the studio look soon, out. so look for that. We're also going to talk about not just Kendrick's return, but the return of James Harden a little later in the show. First, though... The NBA's new play-in format has been the subject of much discussion over the past few months. Draymond Green scoffed at it. Luka Doncic questioned how fair it is. Mark Cuban, who voted for the play-in as a member of the Board of Governors, called it an enormous mistake. And then there was LeBron, whose take was that, quote, whoever came up with that stuff needs to be fired. Hey, change, as we know, can be hard. And I'm going to say it's probably not a coincidence. All those comments came right when the Warriors and Mavericks and Lakers were all falling into the play and range of the standings themselves. Still, there was one thing that Cuban said to our Tim McMahon that really stuck with me. Cuban complained that, quote, rather than being able to rest players if the standings become clearer, teams have to approach every game as a playoff game to either get into or stay into the top six. Yes, Mark, they do. And as we've seen over the past couple days, that is the feature, not the bug. Teams like the Wizards, who in the old format would have been tanking by now, are instead scrapping, meaning we're getting fireworks nightly from Russell Westbrook and when he's healthy, Bradley Beal. Meanwhile, teams who in the past would have been content to just amble around the bottom half of the bracket are now desperate to get out of those seven or eight spots. Take the Heat, who after sitting at seven just six days ago, have gone on such a tear, they're now at the five seed. And that in turn has pushed the Hawks and Knicks, who are in a tiebreaker with them, down to the play-in border, which meant last night we got a bruiser of a game between the Knicks and Lakers. Now, to Mark Cuban's point, in the past, this could easily have been part of the NBA's end of regular season Restorama festival that they like to hold. But instead, it was an all-out war, with both teams defending so hard that honestly, when I flipped to this game last night, the score felt so 90s throwback, I had to check it against the clock twice. <laughs> Julius Randle was showing out against the team that let him walk three years ago. Then in overtime, we got Taylor Horton Tucker coughing up the ball twice, mm, only to then hit the go-ahead three-pointer with 21 seconds on the clock. Oh, and did you notice Anthony Davis taunting Spike Lee? Oh, I'm so sorry, good sir. I can't hear you over the sweet sound of victory. <laughs> AD tweaked his groin in this game. More on that later. But the win helped keep alive LA's hopes of making it out of the play-in, which is important since if they don't, they will likely have to face off against the Warriors just to get into the main draw. And the Warriors are a problem right now. Two nights ago, they knocked off an undermanned but still top-seeded Utah squad. Then last night, it was a nail-biting win against Phoenix. Steph had an uncharacteristically bad shooting night, going just one for 11 from three. Although, I'm not sure how you're supposed to even get a shot off when this is how the other team is defending you. I mean, there are four guys there on him. Still, the Warriors got it done, looking so scrappy. They brought comparisons to Golden State's 2007, we believe, team. A notion, a notion that Draymond then immediately shot down. You know, no disrespect to them at all, because uh, what they did was incredible. Uh, but, no, we're not no We Believe 2.0. Got back it on. on our team. Yeah, the Warriors have bleeping Steph Curry, which last night aside is what makes them so dangerous in this new format that has transformed the final leg of the regular season. So should the guy in the league office who championed the play-in tournament really be fired? As far as I'm concerned, he deserves a raise. <laughs> Shout out to Evan, by the way, who is who we were talking about. Okay, Matt, so you are one of the most qualified people in the world to answer this question, yes. despite what Draymond may have said. Does this current Warriors team remind you of your We Believe Warriors team? Absolutely not. Okay, you're, uh, you he know, is this right. Team, <laughs> this team is coming off a dynasty, yeah. uh, you know, three championships. I think what made that We Believe team so special, because if you look at it, it was about three months. We won one series, right. we lost in the second <laughs> round. What made that team so special is the bond we developed off the court, how everyone ended up in Golden State, the bonds our moms had before my mom died. So we were just a team that was different. Mm. But... All you're seeing right now at Golden State is what you're supposed to see is they're getting hot at the right time. So I right. completely agree Mom, with Dre, uh, completely agree with Draymond. We're not offended by it. He's right. Yep. What do you think, Perk? Well, look, well, look. I, I, 
I actually like it. And I'm not talking about the <laughs> overall dynasty, man. I'm talking about same position, right? The same position. Y'all were AC that went up against the number one seed and beat Dallas that year, right? This is the same position. The Golden State Warriors are probably going to be the eight seed and they're going to go against the top seed. And so I see it because no one believed in them. And I get it. They have Steph Curry, one of the greatest shooters of all time, one of the greatest players of all time. But you're right. They were different. Y'all had Baron Davis, who's, by the way, one of the most underrated mm, PGs absolutely. of all time to ever play the game of basketball. And when I look at the personnel, yes, y'all had dogs, right? Y'all had killers. Y'all had guys that would get up into your ass face, get up into your face that wanted all the smoke. They have guys that could play. They don't want all the smoke, but they go out there and get the job done. And when I look at a guy like Andrew Wiggins, he reminds me a lot of Steven Jackson right now, the way that he's playing. He's playing both ends of the floor. He's contributing offensively at a high rate, an efficient rate, and he's bought in into the culture. I'm not saying he that they, that they are y'all personality-wise. They are not. I'm saying same position, <laughs> and I love the direction. I kind of love the comparison. Not the dynasty overall, just this year. Well, let me, let me take that uh, the next step, Perk. And by the way, I... I, I'm going to just let the Wiggins-Jack thing float because, yeah, that's better not to get into on television. <laughs> but I will say this. If you look at them being potentially the eighth seed against a number one seed, which is Utah right now, the Jazz just announced that Donovan Mitchell will not be playing the rest of the regular season. He is going to debut back from that injury in the first round, so he will be just getting his legs back under him. Matt, what would you say right now if you had to pick a Utah Warriors first-round series? I would love to see what the Warriors win, and I think they have a great chance, especially if their leading scorer, someone who leads them on both sides of the floor, and Donovan Mitchell is either struggling. Everyone knows an ankle, you can't just turn it on with an ankle. If it's not feeling good, it's going to be tough, and they have to chase a step around and play it out of so many pick and rolls. That can really hinder this team. So I said this earlier, and I say this with all due respect to Utah and Phoenix. I wouldn't be surprised if a 7-2 or a 1-8 upset that happened in the first round of the playoffs this year. Who you pick, Perk? Well, first, Rachel, let me go back to your point real quick. I would never disrespect my big brother stacking. No. Now, <laughs> let me clear that up. Okay, you got that part right. I, I just, they two different people. They're pretty different. But, but I will say this. I want, I want you and Matt to go back into the bubble with me last year, right? And you remember what Jamal Murray did to the Utah Jazz oh, to yeah. get through that series? Are y'all telling me that Steph Curry can't do the same thing? Not, he not. can. And, and then, And then also, you're looking at two former defensive player of the years going at it. Rudy Gobert and uh, Draymond Green. Draymond Green is so awesome at anchoring the defense and calling out sets and putting guys in position to be successful. But you look at guys like Poole. You look like guys like Looney, who's been there before. And if the Utah Jazz are not healthy, mm -hmm. Donovan Mitchell, Mike Conley coming off the injury, hey, Anything the Golden State Warriors got a fair shot. Absolutely. Well, look, Draymond Green said the other night he thinks he's Defensive Player of the Year. Rudy Gobert has said he thinks he's Defensive Player of the Year. I believe Drew Holiday just told Yahoo he thinks he's Defensive Player of the Year. I know that we've heard Joe L. M. B. say that he thinks it. he's Bam's Defensive Player of the Year Bam, and Simmons. MVP. Mm -hmm. The only one who can't, who, who I can never get to stump for himself, Nikola Jokic, is always so humble. He's like, I'll let other people talk about MVP. Other players, though, they have some thoughts about where they go, and Draymond's certainly one of them. All all right, let's take a look at today's magic moment brought to you by Walt Disney World Resort. Anthony Davis battling through a groin issue to score 20 points, playing a tough 43 minutes in the Lakers' OT win over the Knicks. Now, after last <coughs> night's game, AD spoke about his health and status for tonight's game against the Rockets. Take a listen to this. You know, I'm hurt. <laughs> um, not more so my body, just, you know, my groin got tight. Um, you know, that, that, was, that was really it. Not sure where it came from. There's no way I was coming out the game. I mean, big game for us. You know, a team who's playing real high. You know, the situation that we're in, trying to battle for, for six. And it was a huge game for us. And I didn't want to um, come out, no matter injury, and, and uh, finish the game and make sure we secure the win. Very strong possibility that I, uh, you know, fight through it and play since the next day is off day. But also don't want to have this lagging. And then now I'm out for a couple games. So I mean, we'll see how I feel. All right, so Perk, listening to all that and knowing AD is currently questionable for tonight, what do you think the Lakers should do? I think they should sit him. 
I mean, look, they're playing the Houston Rockets, and it, it's just no disrespect to Coach Silas and Coach John Lucas, but they suck. They're not good. <laughs> and even without Anthony Davis and LeBron James, this, this Laker team should be able to beat them. So they rest Anthony Davis, LeBron James come back tonight, and they still win in good fashion, and then he move on to the next game. But how Anthony Davis played last night, the minutes, the impact on his body, the workload, I wouldn't play him because it could risk, it could possibly have a chance of risking another injury. So I would say. Uh, real quick before I give my point, Perk, congratulations on your extension to get in the bag. And, oh. you're, hey, and you're talking oh. like you got the bag. I was going to say, we hey. get Perk unfiltered hey. today. I the way, love it. Hey, the way you're talking, you talking like you just got the bag. So uh, congratulations, <laughs> and I feel you. But absolutely, they need to rest AD. You know, uh, you much rather have AD rest now. He already said he feels like he's back. His rhythm is back, which is most important. But you much rather rest him for rest mm -hmm. than have to rest him to recover for an injury. So this is those growings are really tricky. He also got need in the quad late in that game um, right above the knee so AD's health is the most outside of LeBron's health just as important for them to make any new, uh, run in the playoffs this year so I would definitely rest him tonight and uh, have him ready for the playoffs and the hope is that LeBron can play tonight right the goal for him was trying to get in back into the lineup this evening and and look the Lakers need every game they can get with a semblance of their full lineup, which, by the way, they wouldn't even have tonight either way. Dennis Schroeder, one of their starters, is still out. But just getting guys to understand what it's like to play with LeBron and AD together since they've had new acquisitions and that chemistry is so important, you want him to play in a game tonight. But I do agree with both of you guys. It's not worth the risk no. of further injury. <laughs> if he is out in the first round, I mean, I don't see how the Lakers advance past that with LeBron, who is still working his way back. No Anthony Davis. So I think you got to protect that at all costs. I think the Lakers have to realize that opposing teams are going to test both LeBron and AD mm -hmm. when they're out there, try to make yep. Anthony Davis change directions. Probably not a coincidence. Maybe he got a little knock in, what, what did you say, the calf area, right? That no, he got I, a quad? I, thought, I thought he got knee above his knee. In the, that's oh, why right, he was in the quad, one point right? Yeah, so quad, so. I, I just I think they got to expect that all the time and take the precautions against it. We'll have to see what they decide later this evening. All right, coming up, Chris Paul, Steph Curry went at it last night. So that made us run it back on some of the top head-to-head -head moments between the two three regular season games as he continues to recover from that sprained right ankle. He is going to be reevaluated before the beginning of the playoffs. So, Matt, how worried mm. should Jazz fans huge, be? Huge, huge hit. I mean, he's so important to this team, and obviously we all know ankles are nothing to mess with. I mean, either you can go or you can't, and if you, if you can't, if he's going to try to tough it out, you're really going to be able to see that. Um, not only him, but Mike Conley. You know, mm -hmm. so like I said, the East, or excuse me, the, the, the East is very top heavy at the yeah. top. The West is a little different. I wouldn't be surprised if a 7-2 or a 1-8 upset happens in the first round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. And look, Rachel, we have to remember uh, uh, Donovan Mitchell had an audition last year in the bubble, and that's why he got the big contract. And I think he took a leap to being a superstar for how he performed in the bubble, going toe to toe with Jamal Murray when it mattered the most. And we all know in this postseason and in the playoffs, you need that superstar power. Yep. You know, Bogdanovich has been great. Rudy Gobert is who he is, but you still need that Donovan Mitchell, that guy could go out there and get you 45 or 50 points. And this why this all season on this particular show, I said mm -hmm. they needed one more score. You know, I wasn't expecting Mitchell to be out, but I just think in the playoffs, you need your go-to guys. And they don't, with, with, with Mitchell out, Conley's another efficient scorer, but he's been in and out. You need a go-to guy, and do yeah. they have and that? And you're not talking about Clarkson off the bench. I That's love Jordan Clarkson, category. but it's different. You know, your sixth man can't be your, your go-to guy. It, it, you, he needs, he's obviously going to be able to help. He's efficient score as well but you need your go-to guy and that's Donovan Mitchell like I said been saying all season they needed one more score but hopefully he can come back and, and be the player he was in the bubble last year and Perk I agree with you Donovan Mitchell earned every dollar of that contract <laughs> but it will be hard to play your way into shape in a first round when you are facing possibly the Steph Lakers Curry. or Lord. the Warriors. Right. <laughs> so that is just a tough thing and as I said earlier in the show also with a different injury with a different player Guys in the playoffs, I've seen you all. Y'all go, you go all at the person who's oh, injured. No you test someone, you make them move. I know how you guys work. So in the playoffs, <laughs> it doesn't happen as much during the regular season, but in the playoffs, they absolutely always see someone working a guy with an injury. So and it's let, just something that happens. Let me say one more thing, too. Obviously, this Warrior team isn't the We Believe team, as Draymond said, but we do owe Utah in the playoffs. So this might be one of those. <laughs>
the Warriors <laughs> time to pay him back for us. <laughs> there we go. All right, we'll see that. We'll see. Utah, obviously, a legit first seed, when, you know, if that's the way it turns out. All right, Seattle Storm star Brianna Stewart signing with Puma. She is going to receive her own signature shoe. It will be the first original women's product made from scratch <laughs> in more than a decade Love it. since our friend Candace Parker had that signature TS East Commander in 10, 2010. Kendrick, how big a deal is this? It's huge. It's huge. And I just want to know when Big Perk is going to get his pal. As long as I get a pal, <laughs> I'm all good with it. But nah, this makes me proud because it, make, it lets me know that the women, the WNBA players are getting appreciated like they supposed to. Like it's more WNBA players that should have their own signature shoe. And I think this is just the starting point. Hats off to Puma, Puma basketball in particular. Ever yep. since they had new management, yep. they've really been thinking outside the box. And what I love about this is this gives every little girl in the country the, the hope and the dream that, hey man, one day I can have my own shoe. So I think that Puma's setting a precedent now for Nike and Adidas, and it's usually the other way around. So, again, shout out to Puma uh, basketball, man. Absolutely. And, Perk, we got Stewie on the show tomorrow, so I'll ask her if she can work in a little, a little shoe shoes box too. purchase for the two of you guys. <laughs> All right, let's talk Raptors. They were officially eliminated from playoff contention with the Pacers' win over the Cavs on Monday. We wanted to call back to that because it's the first time in eight seasons that the Raptors have missed the playoffs. Matt, there's some big decisions to be made on Gary Trent Jr., Kyle Lowry, even Masai Ujiri. His deal is up this offseason. What do you think is next for this team? I think we've seen the greatest Raptor of all time, uh, Kyle Lowry, play his last game as a mm. Raptor. Um, this team's only two two years removed from the finals, but anytime you lose a Kyrie, or excuse me, a Kawhi Leonard, and right before you lost Kawhi Leonard, you to get Kawhi Leonard, you had to lose DeMar DeRozan. So your two best current players, um, you lose them. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the GM jumped ship. Trent is a young, up-and-coming superstar. He'll probably get a big bag to stay there, but I think we've seen the last of Kyle Lowry in, in Toronto. Hmm. Hey, I agree. I think it's over with for Kyle Lowry. He'll be somewhere else on the contender next season. My biggest question, Mark, with that franchise is, my biggest question is, what's going to happen to Pascal Siakam? We know that he had a lot of up and downs, a lot of battles within the organization this year. He was unhappy. They paid him a lot of money. He haven't lived up to expectations this season. So I'm, it's going to be interesting to see if they try to move on yeah. away from him because we all know that they are very high on OG. Yeah. I think it, I definitely think it's a rebuilding situation. I think something that Pascal faced that, that outside basketball people wouldn't really understand, Perk, we understand. It's a lot harder from going to the second or third option to being the number one option every single night that a team is game planning for. And I think Pascal is trying to learn how to be that number one option. I, as great as he is, I personally think he's a second or third option on a really good team. But to be that number one option, he learned the ups and downs that we've seen since he got that money about being that top player on the scouting report. He's such a fighter, though. I, I would not count him out as this being love the him. finished product of who he is in the mm -hmm. NBA. He definitely has a future and some growth ahead of him. I do think that the Raptors handled the season correctly after they had that early bout of COVID rock the team. They're playing in Tampa. They're not even in front of their own fans. When it looked like, hey, we're just this isn't going to happen, pushing these guys to the point where they might fall apart just to get sort of an eight or seven playoff berth wasn't worth it. But they so got a championship we'll out of this whole little yes, run. Yes, they in, like I said. did. And shouts to Kyle Lowry mm -hmm. for that. All right, so LeBron James listed as questionable for the Lakers tonight as they unveil their championship banner in front of the fans at Staples Center. Frank Vogel said, quote, it's sort of a soft plan for him to play, talking about LeBron. So, Perk, what are your expectations if he returns tonight and, you know, they're celebrating last year's title? Do you think that'll give him a little extra boost? Well, I mean, he's going to go out there and perform. I think LeBron James has tricked us into believing <laughs> with his comments saying he'll never be 100%. I'm hearing different, and he picked the right game. You know it's important to pick the right game to come pick the Rockets so you can pick on them. He needed some go. rest. He, I mean, he, he hadn't lost it. He hadn't sat out at all this season, and he took some time to get ready for the playoffs. So I expect LeBron to be on his Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Before we go, special thanks to Aniko <laughs> Pari, our coordinating studio operator. Her last day is... Blazers taking on the Jazz, who are trying to knock down that number one seed throughout the playoffs. All right, we now welcome in our senior NBA writer for ESPN's The Undefeated, Mark Spears. Big Mark. Mark, we are talking hey. just before the break about your Jimmy Butler article. It was fantastic. Really recommend everyone take a look. And he was talking to you about how the Mamba mentality impacts his performance on the court. Can you share a little bit of that conversation? Yeah, you know, I asked him about all the uh, three uh, superstars going in the Hall of Fame, Duncan, Garnett, and Kobe. And he, he loved all three of them. But... 
especially has been inspired by Kobe, his, his mama mentality, how hard he plays every game, and his will to win, as we saw from Jimmy, certainly in the bubble. Yeah, I mean, look, Matt, you're someone who is so close with Kobe. Do you see any resemblance there? Oh, definitely. I mean, Jimmy's someone who leaves it out there on the court every single night. That team goes as Jimmy goes. And uh, he... Russell Westbrook is also someone who else comes in, mm -hmm. into mind when you talk about that. And obviously, these are big shoes to fill, but, you know, Russ is someone out there every single night, both ends of the floor, along with Jimmy. And I think some similarities that people might not think of is both all three of those guys were speaking up. Even Kobe were a little bit misunderstood. You know, mm -hmm. superstars that people don't really understand. So sometimes instead of showing love, they show hate. So I definitely think there's a lot of similarities between those guys. Mm, I agree. I agree. Russ falls under that category. So do Giannis. But when you talk about Jimmy, right? I think sometimes he get overlooked a lot of times. Even looking at this season, yeah. I know he only averaged 20, 20 points a game, but he's giving out seven, almost seven. He's giving out seven rebounds, seven assists. He leads the league in steals. He don't take possessions off. The Heat are uh, below average, a uh, below five hundred team without Jimmy. They're thirty two and nineteen with Jimmy. He brings it every single possession. And see, when I when I think of guys with the Marvel mentality. I need to look at guys and watch guys that play every possession, not every minute, but every second. Mm. And Jimmy falls under that category. Yeah, and look, I mean, there was a part of Kobe's personality, which was, I don't care if you right. don't like me. Right. I'm not doing this to be Mr. <laughs> Popularity. Right. And I think that's something Jimmy has really embraced, too. Uh, Jimmy says it a lot. He says, I'm not for everyone. Right. He said, These, this Heat team, we're not for everyone. But the people who appreciate the kind of stuff we do, those are the kind of people mm -hmm. that we are playing for. And that, to me, is a very Kobe quality, you know, especially in, in that last sort of championship run section, the 2009-2010, sorry, Perk, 2009-2010 <laughs> section, <laughs> section of his <laughs> career. All right. So I do also want to talk about Jimmy's team more. And, Perk, you got into it a little bit. They're coming off that finals run last season, but I'm not sure how many people would pick them in their brackets heading into this postseason for you. When you're looking at the playoffs and they maybe they end up in that four or five spot, that's what they're battling for right now. How scary are the Heat, in your opinion, in that bracket? You, you know what? They are really scary, Rachel. And after watching them the last two games against the Celtics, they want all the smoke. And they're playing exceptional basketball. Tyler Hero is being the Tyler Hero from the bubble. Duncan Robinson is shooting the lights out. Trevor Reese is finally finding his stride and his niche in the offense. And we all know what Bam and Jimmy is going to bring to the table. But the two unsung heroes that don't get enough credit on that team is Kendrick Nunn and Goran Dragic. And then you have a coach in Eric Spolstra, who I strongly believe is the best coach in today's game when you mm. talk about X's and O's and mixing it up on the defensive end. The Miami Heat are scary. You know what I call them? Them goons from yes. day count. <laughs> <laughs> I think for some of the younger players on that Heat team, there was a final hangover. I, you know, so for some of the younger players, first time experience, they got all kinds of fame, and I'm sure the summer was a lot different. And I think it took a little while for that to wear off on the younger players. Jimmy was in and out with injury, COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've always said, you know, this team goes as Jimmy goes. I think Trevor Reza was a huge, huge pickup. He's been playing great basketball. And as, uh, as Perk pointed out, there are two guards that kind of go unsung. You still got Andre Iguodala over there. They showed you what happens when you get hot at the right time last year. They made a run to the final. So this team is definitely getting their footing at the right time, playing their best basketball. Bam is definitely in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year, and if he doesn't get in that conversation, he's definitely going to win some before his career is over. So this team has all the pieces, mm -hmm. and as we know, you get hot at the right time, you can make a run. So be, uh, be on the lookout for the Heat. Yep. Rachel, I think they're nightmare on South Beach scary. <laughs> this is the same team, Rachel. We were in the bubble. Yep. They're the fifth seed now, right? Mm -hmm. they, were the, they were the fifth seed in the bubble. Yep. They beat the Pacers, who were a higher seed, 4-0 in the first round. They beat the Bucks, who a lot of people thought could win it in the second round, four to one. Then they end up beating the Celtics. And next thing you know, they're in the finals. And if it wasn't for some injuries, mm -hmm. I mean, who knows what happened, but they more, pushed it to six games. Right. So, I mean, this is this is a team, man, that is is really uh I don't want to use the word war mentality, but they they together. Or they're ready to fight. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's different is they're not in the bubble eating chunky soup like Adonis Haslam had them doing. <laughs> and that, I think the bubble brought them together, made them unify yeah. where other teams like the Clippers fell apart. So maybe they should go to the dorms at, 
you know, Florida International or something, stay in the dorms and eat the dorm food so they could get that UD I Jimmy don't know. Butler nasty. No way. Again. I don't know. Plus, I don't know if Udonis Haslam's Amazon habit can stand another run in the bubble. I know that he spent tens of thousands of dollars trying to bring some of the creature comforts of home to that bubble for him. So uh, he might, he and his wallet might want to stay out of a bubble again. I am yeah. really happy that you guys brought up Kendrick Nunn as well. If you remember, he didn't have the best bubble, and there were people who were kind of surprised by that after some of the stuff he had done earlier in the season. He had COVID, and he felt effects from having COVID for a long time, and that is something, as we've seen with Jason Tatum, with Evan Fournier, don't Google, that, that, that this can last for a while and can affect guys' play. So I'm excited for Kendrick Nunn to get a better shot at a playoff run where he's feeling completely healthy. All right, guys, Mark's going to stay with us. Coming up, we're going to discuss James Harden. He's expected to play tonight after missing the last five weeks with that strained hammy. We will discuss what's next at stake for the Nets tonight in his return following the premiere. Can't wait for that. All right, let's talk Kyrie Irving. He left last night's game against the Bulls after getting elbowed in the face by Nikola Vucevic. Irving was declared clear of a concussion, but he will need a second x-ray today to determine any further damage. He's listed as questionable for tonight's game against the Spurs. Remember, Kyrie's had those eye injuries in the past, so you really want to be careful with this stuff. Now, Kyrie's potential absence spoils James Harden's expected return after missing 18 straight games. Harden has been out since April 5th when an MRI revealed a hamstring strain. The Nets are two games behind the Sixers for the number one spot. Just one game, though, in front of the Bucks, who are in third, so this game really matters. Mark, are you concerned the Nets may not get to full strength before the regular season ends or as long as they've got Harden back? He does <laughs> seem to be the activator in their win-loss record. When he plays, their record is pretty phenomenal. Well, I think I'll be concerned until their season ends. Uh, injuries <laughs> has just been something that has been hampering this team. But I'm really happy for James Harden. He expects to play a couple games, and he needs to get the rust off. I don't know if it's enough games to do it. He said he expects expects to play a couple, so yeah, I expect him to play tonight, but I definitely don't expect him to play that back-to-back this weekend. The one good thing about the Nets, though, is even if they don't have all three, if at least two of their big three play, they're always elite and capable of beating anybody. I think, Mark, you hit it on the head. The, le- the fact that they have three superstars, and granted, we haven't got to see all of them as much as we want to together. It's always a luxury to steal if one's down. Um, you still have two left. One thing about Kyrie, he's played with the mask before, and his numbers don't dip too much. Nope. Uh, another thing about James as well, I mean, when, with him in the lineup, they have the best winning percentage in the NBA. With him out of the lineup, they're one game over 500. So James is a huge piece to make this team go. Obviously, we all selfishly want to see all three of these guys together. But, you know, like Mark said, uh, I'm going to be worried about this team anytime any one of these three guys fall down. And that even goes for, like, AD and Giannis. Anytime I see stars fall down now, or her, I'm just, I get nervous for a second because we, I, we desperately want to see everybody healthy in the playoffs. So I think this team will get there. And to me, it's the Nets East to lose. Hmm. Well, well, I disagree. With you, I disagree with you, man. You still my brother. I'm picking <laughs> fifth out of the conference. But look, let me tell you why. And here's, here's why: because look, we all know with the big three on the court, whether or not they play together in the regular season, they're going to score points offensively. I'm worrying about the others. Okay, the Joe Harris, the uh, Jeff Green, DeAndre Jordan. Uh, you know, Claxton, worrying about rotations, right? Steve Nash got to figure out which lineups work defensively, right? Because their defensive identity is not there. And when you look at the Eastern Conference, it's not weak, it's strong. Mm-hmm. Philly has Philly are deep from top to bottom. So is the Milwaukee Bucks. We just got through talking about the Miami Heat. They have these teams that are not afraid of the Brooklyn Nets. And the Brooklyn Nets can't outscore everyone, right? You got teams that could get hot. But at the end of the day, at some point in time, you're going to have to buckle up and get stops. It's in it's in history. Well, it don't matter what big three you throw out there, whether it was LeBron with Miami, whether it was Steph, Clay, and KD, or, or Paul, Ray, and, and, and uh, KG, they all rank top in defensive categories. So, Defense does win championships no matter how much offensive firepower you have. But injuries can stop them, too. And that's what I thought happened with the Raptors. I mean, if that team was healthy, uh, hey, Kawhi, with all due respect, the Warriors oh, would have no beat question. them. You mean the Golden State yeah. against the Raptors, yeah. 
Well, I think one yeah. thing I'm encouraged about is we talked about this team's defensive all year, but if you watch when these guys are playing, because they definitely hurt us, they were individually locking down. And then yeah. Claxton is kind of coming into his own. You know DeAndre Jordan is still going to be a blanket back there. Jeff Green is a very versatile big for them. So I don't worry about it. Obviously, defense is very important. The game slows down in the playoffs. But when you got three guns like that, I think their job is just to make sure that all the other guns, like you said, Joe Harris and Shaman and all these other guys get touches because you know what you're going to get out of that big three. You're going to get a lot of buckets. But again, like I said, Katie locked down. Kyrie and James have definitely been on the ball and, and playing a lot better defense. So I'm not as worried as I was at the beginning of the season about their defense, to be honest with you. And look, look at that bracket. With all due respect to Boston or Charlotte, who could possibly end up in that seventh spot if the bracket stays as it is, it's not the Warriors and Lakers in the play-in tournament in the no. West. It's a different no. quality of team down there. Boston is without Jalen Brown. Charlotte's just getting its taste of what this team could be. And so if the Nets need to use the first round to sort of play themselves into shape, that We've seen it happen before in the Eastern Conference, and it's worked out just fine. Mark, before we let you go, we want to congratulate you on being selected to host the <laughs> Newsman Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame Class of 2020 hey. enshrinement press conference this weekend. Uh, for people who don't know, that press conference is big this deal. sort of big moment where we get to see all the guys together. It is a well-deserved honor. This is a class that will never be forgotten, and you will be in all those pictures. I can't wait. Congratulations. Uh, I'll just say, and, and you guys... Thank you, thank you. I just wish Kobe was there, you know. Absolutely. That, that, that's going to be the tough thing about it, so it should be interesting. <laughs> make, miss. It's a make or miss league, baby. Let's see. It is indeed. It. Make precision. You know what this music means. So many passing highlights across the association. Matt, just oh. as you watch these roll, was it Magic Johnson tribute? I, I guess so. Night? I mean, no there, was a lot, there was a lot of beautiful passes. Obviously, Magic was known for all you youngsters for making, you know, the <laughs> simple pass look easy, or excuse me, the difficult pass look easy. So it was great to see the ball movement, like it's always moving every night. But last night was a little special. You know what's crazy is that with Rondo, he used to make those passes, and we used to tell him, man, you trying to look cute. And he was like, no, it's the right pass to make. Mm -hmm. I have to make this mm -hmm. pass. <laughs> Yeah. I would not have any other man walk up to Rajon Rondo and say, you look cute, just because <laughs> even when he was young, he was old, right? Doesn't look good. He's no one's kidding. He's a big old junkyard dog. <laughs> cute is for 15-year-olds. <laughs> Miss sitting. Nugs Hornets. Oh. Watch Composo pull the chair out from B.J. Washington. Oops, sorry about that, dude. And okay, then no. over to Detroit where D'Angelo Russell. Uh-oh, what's in his water bottle? I'm a wondering. A literal no-chair yeah. moment. Hey, what's in his water bottle? Perk, where have all the chairs gone? I don't blame him. I, th I would have thought that was like a, you know, like a bench or something. I don't know, but look, Rachel, how you say his name again? Capazzo, yes. right? He don't play like your ordinary rookie. He's he does before not. before his time. He has been playing some ex exceptional basketball, but... You know, that's just the luck of the draw. You right there, that's on the ball, boys. <laughs> Not having D-Lo them chairs in the right place. But Composo's a super rookie, isn't he? Isn't he like 28 or 29? Or he's a little older, <laughs> isn't he? He is, he is, he is an aging rookie. Yeah. I, I will, yeah, Dan, D-Lo, sorry. All right, make opportunities, Nets Bulls. Look at Mike James uh -oh. with the ankle breaker uh -oh. and the dish. Uh -oh. Perk, right. you oh. like this guy, right? I love I love him. Look, I thought so. He went to Lamar University down there in Beaumont, Texas, where I was from. I got a chance to watch him in college, work out with him. And it was a reason he kept winning MVPs overseas, Rachel. Mm -hmm. He is something special. Oh, they he definitely does got this it. in his sleep. Yeah, he did, they, they definitely got a steal being able to pick this guy up with his all of experience, like Perk said, winning MVPs overseas. Overseas, He's not new to this. He's not afraid of the moment, and he's definitely going to help these guys in the playoffs. And look, they were able to get him because he got into some trouble with those teams. I believe it's only because, I might have some of the slight details wrong, but only because he was on a suspension from his EuroLeague team is why he was even available for Sean March. So. Lucky. I appreciate the fact that he has buckled down. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's appreciate that he's taking this opportunity in the NBA and right. making the most of it. All right, Miss, look ahead. It's Chris Paul, Steph Curry have played each other 50 times in their careers. Mm. That's a crazy number. Mm. Steph holds the edge, 28 to 22. Of course, he's had some pretty good friends to bring with him to those battles. Matt, is this one of the more underrated matchups in the league? Absolutely. I've been front row seats for these early battles when the Warriors are just mm -hmm. getting who, becoming who they are as far as a dynasty and Lob City was kind of there and then kind of faded out. But those guys used to battle every single night. And this is a very underestimated rival. They both dropped each other. They both talked trash back and forth. It's always <laughs> a beautiful thing to watch. Two different, completely different types of players. So too, different. But still, 
two yeah. of the top five point guards in the history of the game. I was wondering, I was wondering why I hadn't seen Steph on those state uh, farm Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe by time to run it back to our favorite CP3 Steph moments, All Star Game just a few months ago. Wow. Exchanging some alley oh. Yeah. Steph got his easy. Chris looked like he struggled to get up there, though. Chris is a little older. Well, you know. <laughs> get up, CP. Uh, yeah, there we there go. You go. <laughs> yeah, you saw how yeah, you had to look good. Now, coming down. <laughs> look at Steph. I love how they're too. cheering for each other. It's so fun. I think it's great. I mean, these guys have obviously been harsh competitors their whole career, but to get a chance to have fun together in the All-Star game. Like, yeah, I saw a lot of this. You saw well, me. I was trying to clap combo. like it was, like was going to help. Like, <laughs> let me try to distract them. <laughs> look at him. Mm. Oh. He's a vet, you know, CP3 mm. will try anything. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, 2018 playoffs. Chris Paul with the snatch back. Just left him seated. All right, Ooh. so this is the Jimmy, but gets the put back. Boom. Now, this has definitely been been battles. I, I mean, we're definitely going to miss this if right? we don't get to see this anymore. I like, he's like, no, 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 I need to clean that up myself because that highlight must live. Got to finish. Still 2018. Chris beats the shot clock. Uh. Then he does the step shimmy on this. Take a look afterward. That's a great D, by the way, right? too. Great D. Little, little uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> look at Steph's face. <laughs> <laughs> That's phenomenal. 2015. Hey, this, hey, this was tough. I was right going baseline. Goes oh. behind the back twice. Ooh, 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 ooh. Feathered that. That was ugly. Their feet got yeah, tangled, was but hey, he dropped them. It was, that was scary. Yeah, yeah, CP Remember the meme? The that was kind of when memes were just started. Remember right. they had CP memeing all yep. throughout the world doing his little uh, hand on the Although ground. Oh, the feet, yeah, I, I got to say, the I've feet I've seen it did, right then. Right? You were right yeah. there. Yeah. But, but you, know, you know the thing that I love about it in all these clips is